Ceratogallus is the only known rodent genus with horns, and is the smallest known horned mammal. Its nasal horns are inconsistent with use as a digging tool. In recent mammals that use their heads for excavating, the tips of their snouts are used like a spade to scrape at the substrate. Many of the objections that apply to the horns as a digging implement also apply to the use of the horns in sexual combat. Their orientation and position and the morphology of the rest of the skull make it exceedingly difficult to bring them to bear on an opponent of similar size. Mountain beavers are capable of climbing trees, but rarely travel far from burrows. Their thumbs are slightly opposable and the animals will sit on their hindquarters and manipulate food with their forelimbs and incisors. Mountain beavers are a social and do not live in shared burrows. Burrows usually consist of a network of tunnels built in deep soil. The entrances to these burrows often contain clumps of wilted vegetation which the animal likely uses as a kind of food cache as well as a source of nesting material. Red squirrels are known for their agility and ability to leap between trees. They are also territorial and can be quite vocal, using a series of high-pitched calls to communicate with other squirrels. In the wild, they typically live for three to five years, although many do not survive past their first year due to predation and other factors. Unlike some other squirrel species, they do not hibernate. They remain active throughout the winter, relying on their stored food caches to survive the colder months. The bushy tail of a red squirrel serves multiple purposes. It helps with balance when jumping from tree to tree, acts as a rudder when they are in the air, and provides insulation during cold weather. They are known for their caching behavior, where they bury nuts and seeds in the ground to store for later consumption. They have excellent spatial memory and can locate these hidden food stores even months later. A distinctive feature of flying squirrels is the furry glide membrane or patagium, a flap of skin that stretches between the front and rear legs. By spreading this membrane, it may glide from tree to tree across distances of over a hundred meters they favor old forests with a mix of conifers and deciduous trees. They are mostly nocturnal, being most active late in the evening, although females with young may also feed during the day. They do not hibernate but in the winter, they may sometimes sleep continuously for several days. As shy and nocturnal animals, they are seldom seen. Hoses pygmy flying squirrels have a distinctive appearance with large, round eyes, soft fur and a flattened tail that helps them glide through the forest canopy. Their fur coloration can vary but is often grayish-brown or reddish-brown on the upper parts, with a paler belly. While they are generally solitary animals, they may share nests with others of their kind, especially during the breeding season. Like other flying squirrels, Japanese giant flying squirrel have a patagium, a membrane that stretches between their wrists and ankles, allowing them to glide from tree to tree. Their glides can cover considerable distances. Their diet consists mainly of plant materials, including fruits, nuts and seeds. They are one of the larger species of flying squirrels, with a body length ranging from about 28 to 36 centimeters. As is typical for ground squirrels, California ground squirrels live in burrows, which they excavate themselves. Some burrows are occupied communally, but each squirrel has its own entrance. Vigilant behavior in squirrels is a defense mechanism to avoid predation. In addition to the tail waving, the squirrels have been found to be more vigilant and on alert if a predator had recently been in the area than they were if no predator had been detected. If the ground squirrels are aware that they are in an area where the rattlesnakes have recently been, they devote more time to being alert and searching for the predators than to hunting and foraging than in an environment where they do not believe predators exist. 
Cape ground squirrels are social animals and often live in colonies. Within a colony, they dig and maintain complex underground burrow systems with multiple entrances. These burrows provide protection from predators and temperature extremes. They reproduce seasonally, with breeding typically occurring during the warmer months. Females give birth to litters of one to six offspring, with an average of two to three. The young are born blind and hairless and are cared for by the mother. They can be seen foraging for food on the ground, and their long, bushy tails are often held upright as they move about. Harris's antelope squirrel has a high body temperature of 37 to 42 degrees Celsius in order to protect itself from the heat of the Sonoran Desert, it carries their tails over their bodies in order to provide shade. It also participates in a heat reduction method where individuals move into shaded positions and lie spread eagled against the ground. This is referred to as heat dumping. They are active during the day, and do not sweat but otherwise reduce temperature by salivating. They have a wide-ranging diet, including both vegetation, insects, small rodents, and carrion. Siberian chipmunks are essential food sources for other animals, such as diurnal raptors, weasels and small cats. They evade being preyed upon by these animals by being alert, hiding in their burrows, and using their camouflaged fur to blend in with surroundings. They distribute seeds and fungal spores and other animals feed off their stored food. They may help control forest tree pests. In Russia, they eat approximately 50% of the forest nuts. Chipmunks with more active and curious behavior, based on trappability of marked individuals, have a greater number of ticks. Some people keep Siberian chipmunks as pets or sell them for their fur or other body parts. Siberian chipmunks may eat crops and damage gardens. In Russia they can cause serious economic damage to grain fields and orchards. The eastern chipmunk can climb trees well, but constructs underground nests with extensive tunnel systems, often with several entrances. To hide the construction of its burrow, it is argued by some to carry soil to a different location in its cheek pouches. It defends its burrow and lives a solitary life, except during mating season. In fact, the chipmunk's solitary existence has been noted as one of the most characteristic behavioral features of the chipmunk, whereas social interaction of a relatively peaceful nature occurs only during the brief period of courtship and mating, and during the six to eight weeks that the young spend with the mother after birth. Black-tailed prairie dogs are highly social animals and live in large colonies or towns. A single colony can consist of thousands of individuals. They are known for their complex social structure and communication through a series of barks. They are prolific diggers and create extensive burrow systems within their colonies. These burrows serve as shelter from predators and extreme weather conditions. They play a crucial ecological role in their habitat. They are often considered a keystone species because their burrowing and grazing activities can influence the composition of plant communities and provide habitat and food for a variety of other wildlife species. The alpine marmot originates as an animal of Pleistocene cold steppe, exquisitely adapted to this ice age climate. As such, alpine marmots are excellent diggers, able to penetrate soil that even a pickaxe would have difficulty with, and spend up to nine months per year in hibernation. Since the disappearance of the Pleistocene cold steppe, the alpine marmot persists in the high altitude alpine meadow. During the colonization of alpine habitat, the alpine marmot has lost most of its genetic diversity through a bottleneck effect. It could not rebuild its genetic diversity ever since, as its lifestyle adapted to the ice age climate slowed its rate of genomic evolution. The alpine marmot is indeed one of the least genetically diverse wild living animals.
Lethia, the Maltese giant dormouse, was descended from garden dormice, but thanks to the lack of large land predators on Sicula Malta it was able to evolve a much much larger body size, almost the size of a cat. Recent reconstructions of its skull have shown it was also proportioned differently compared to its tiny modern relatives, more chunkily built with a shorter and wider snout, bigger teeth, and thicker cheekbones that must have anchored some incredibly powerful muscles for chewing. It may have been eating a much more herbivorous diet than other dormice, processing a lot of tough fibrous vegetation. Desert dormouse lives in sandy or clayey soils in arid habitats. It is mainly a nocturnal animal but does sometimes venture into the open during the day. It mostly walks along in a leisurely fashion but if alarmed, can move faster in a series of short bounds. These animals have been little studied in the wild, but in captivity may shelter under rocks and foliage when the weather is warm and only burrow underground during cold periods. The garden dormouse is primarily nocturnal, sleeping in nests in trees during the day, with sometimes multiple individuals living in one nest. They are omnivorous, seasonally consuming both small animals, typically arthropods such as insects and millipedes, snails and plant matter, usually fruit and seeds. They are amongst the most carnivorous of all dormice and have been known to consume adult birds, reptiles, amphibians and small mammals, some of which is likely scavenged. Cannibalism has also been reported. In spite of its name, the garden dormouse's main habitat is the forest, though it can also be found in fruit-growing regions. It is particularly common in southern Europe, but its range extends into the north. Balearic giant dormice were endemic to the Balearic Islands in the western Mediterranean from the early Pliocene until their extinction around 4,000 years ago. They first appeared in the fossil record on Majorca during the early Pliocene, presumably due to the Mycenaean salinity crisis causing a connection with mainland Europe. They later spread to Menorca, and a possible molar is also known from Ibiza. They became extinct during the Holocene after human arrival on the Balearics. They were one of only three native land mammals to the islands at the time of human arrival. Poliacaster was much smaller than modern beavers. Its discovery sprang from the discovery of devil's corkscrews in the plains of Sioux County, in Nebraska, as a tree-sized, screw-like underground formation. Its basic form is an elongated spiral of hardened earth material that inserts into the soil as deep as three meters they excavated their burrows with their incisors, not their claws. Recent research into why it would have made helical burrow suggests that it was a way to maintain a more consistent temperature and humidity level as it got warmer and drier in the early Miocene. Stable isotopes suggest that casteroids probably predominantly consumed submerged aquatic plants, rather than the woody diet of living beavers. There is no evidence that giant beavers constructed dams or lodges. The shape of the incisors of casteroids would have made it much less effective in cutting down trees than living beavers. It was likely heavily dependent on wetland environments for both food and protection from predators. Despite being huge compared to the modern beavers, the size of its brain was proportionally smaller. As a result, the giant beaver may have had inferior interactions in its environment, as well as less complex patterns of thoughts and behavior. Beavers are known as ecological engineers because of their ability to dramatically alter their environment. They build complex dams and lodges, which create wetlands that benefit other wildlife and help purify water. They construct dams made of sticks, mud and stones across streams and rivers. These dams create ponds and slow-moving water, providing a safe habitat for aquatic plants, insects and fish. Beavers also build lodges in ponds, which serve as shelter and protection from predators. They are well adapted to both land and water. Their webbed hind feet make them excellent swimmers, and they can hold their breath underwater for up to 15 minutes. Beavers are known for their distinctive tail slap behavior. 
When they perceive danger or a potential threat, they rapidly slap their broad, flat tails on the water's surface as a warning signal to other beavers in the area. During the winter, beavers are less active and may stay inside their lodges for extended periods. They rely on their food caches stored in underwater entrances to their lodges. The Gulf Coast kangaroo rat is mainly nocturnal and feeds on seeds which it collects in its cheek pouches and carries back to its burrow. It lives in sparsely vegetated locations with sandy soils, often among dunes and normally on the downwind slope of a dune. There are two distinct color forms, an ashy gray and a reddish or yellowish buff. In both cases the purest color is on the sides and flanks with hairs in the dorsal region having dark tips giving a blackish sheen. The cheeks are white and the ears and upper and lower tail stripes are brown. These nocturnal jerboas move through its dry desert habitat in long hops, balancing with the tail. They live in burrows generally excavated under small bushes. They feed on windblown seeds and succulent leaves of desert-adapted vegetation, food is raised to the mouth using the hands. They undergo a diurnal rhythm of physiological dormancy, when their bodily functions, including respiration and blood circulation, slow down dramatically. This is known as facultative hypothermia and enables the species to survive on a diet of low nutritional value. Gambian pouched rat is among the largest muroids in the world, growing to about 90 centimeters long, including the tail, which makes up half of its total length. Its cheek pouches allow it to gather up several kilograms of nuts per night for storage underground. It has been known to stuff its pouches so full of date palm nuts so as to be hardly able to squeeze through the entrance of its burrow. A Tanzanian social enterprise founded by two Belgians, trains the closely related southern giant pouched rats to detect landmines and tuberculosis with their highly developed sense of smell. Completely nocturnal. The Malagasy giant rats live in burrows up to 5 meters across with as many as 6 entrances which, even those in regular use, are kept blocked by dirt and leaves to discourage predation by the Malagasy ground boa. It is listed as critically endangered. Limited range, habitat destruction, increased predation by non-native feral dogs and cats, and disease have all led to the decline. Many feral cats also carry a parasite called toxoplasmosis which causes rodents to lose their fear of cats, to the point of almost being attracted to cats, resulting in their being caught and killed more easily. Norway lemmings are adapted to life in subarctic and arctic tundra habitats. They are typically found in regions with low-growing vegetation, such as mosses, sedges, and grasses. They are known for their dramatic population cycles, which involve rapid fluctuations in numbers. These cycles typically last for three to four years, with population peaks followed by crashes. The exact causes of these cycles are not fully understood but are believed to be influenced by factors like food availability, predation, and reproduction. During population peaks, Norway lemmings are known for their mass migrations, where they move in large numbers across the landscape in search of food and suitable breeding sites. These migrations can cover significant distances and are often triggered by food scarcity. Siberian lemmings are a critical food source for a variety of predators in their ecosystem. These predators include birds of prey, foxes, and weasels. The lemming population cycles can have a significant impact on the populations of these predator species. 
These lemmings inhabit a range of northern and subarctic environments, including tundra, taiga, and alpine meadows. They are adapted to cold, harsh climates and are often found in areas with a significant snow cover during the winter. Silver mountain voles are well adapted to their high altitude habitats, which can be characterized by cold temperatures, short growing seasons and low oxygen conditions. They are often found in meadows and grassy areas where they can forage for vegetation. These voles are generally solitary and are known for their burrowing behavior. They create complex burrow systems in the soil, which serve as shelter from predators and protection from harsh weather conditions. They are most active during the warmer months when food is abundant. The muskrat is found in wetlands over a wide range of climates and habitats. It has important effects on the ecology of wetlands, and is a resource of food and fur for humans. Their long tails, covered with scales rather than hair, are their main means of propulsion. Muskrats spend most of their time in the water and can swim underwater for 12 to 17 minutes. They live in families, consisting of a male and female pair and their young. To protect themselves from the cold and from predators, they build nests that are often burrowed into the bank with an underwater entrance. Muskrats feed mostly on cattail and other aquatic vegetation but also eat small animals. They are referred to as rats in a general sense because they are medium-sized rodents with an adaptable lifestyle and an omnivorous diet. Native to North America they have been introduced in Eurasia, where they are considered an invasive species. Golden Hamster Natural Geographical Range is in an arid region of northern Syria and southern Turkey. Their numbers have been declining in the wild due to a loss of habitat from agriculture and deliberate elimination by humans. Thus, wild golden hamsters are now considered endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. However, captive breeding programs are well established, and captive-bred golden hamsters are often kept as small house pets. They are also used as scientific research animals. In the wild, the winter white dwarf hamsters fur changes color in the winter. This adaptation helps them to evade predators in the snow-covered steppes. The hamster digs tunnels one meter deep leading to ground burrows where they can sleep, raise their young and hide from predators. The weasel is one of the hamster's main predators. Most of these burrows have six entrances. In the summer, the burrows are lined with moss. To keep the burrow warm in the winter, the hamster closes all but one entrance and lines the burrows with animal fur or wool that it finds. Las Cages Water Mouse is a relatively small rodent with a long, soft, and dense fur coat. Its fur is typically brown on the upper parts and grayish to whitish on the underparts. It has a long tail with a tufted tip. This species is highly specialized and restricted to the cloud forests of the eastern Andes in Ecuador. These cloud forests are characterized by their high humidity, foggy conditions, and diverse plant life. Kemp's grass mouse is primarily nocturnal, they are excellent swimmers and are well adapted to their semi-aquatic habitat. Threats to this species may include habitat loss and degradation due to factors such as deforestation, agricultural activities, and changes in water flow in their delta habitat. It is a locally endemic species, meaning it is found in a specific geographic area and nowhere else in the world. The average lifespan of the Brazilian shrew mouse is unknown, as they are difficult to find. Captive specimens tend to refuse food and die shortly after capture. Very little is known about its diet, however it is assumed to be primarily insectivorous. The hairy-footed gerbil engages in social grooming, where one gerbil lies down and another stands over it and grooms. Other normal grooming habits include scratching, face washing, licking and tail cleaning, and sand bathing. 
The hairy-footed gerbil weighs around 27 grams, smaller than other gerbilura species. They have a head and body length of around 9 cm, and a tail length of 11 cm. Distinctive to this genus are the soles of the feet, which have hair tufts on them, and hairs on each toe. When the maned rat is threatened or excited, the mane erects in this strip parts, exposing the glandular area. The hairs in this area are, at the tips, like ordinary hair, but are otherwise spongy, fibrous, and absorbent with a honeycomb structure. The rat is known to deliberately smear these hairs with poison from the bark of the Acacanthra skimpery, the poison arrow tree, on which it chews, thus creating a defense mechanism that can sicken or even kill predators which attempt to bite it. It is the only rodent known to utilize and store toxins from a different species in nature to protect itself, with no known adverse effects to themselves. One of the most distinctive features of the harvest mouse is its prehensile tail. It uses its long, prehensile tail to grasp onto vegetation and balance while climbing through grasses and reeds. This adaptation allows it to navigate and move through its preferred habitats efficiently. They are primarily associated with tall grasses, reeds and other herbaceous vegetation in wetlands and marshes. They construct nests called dormouse nests by weaving together grasses and suspended them in the vegetation, providing protection from predators in harsh weather. They are generally solitary animals, with individuals typically living and foraging alone. However, they do not display territorial behavior and may overlap in home ranges with other individuals. Black rats are highly adaptable and can thrive in a variety of habitats, they are excellent climbers and are often found in high places, such as roofs and trees. They are omnivorous and have a varied diet. This dietary flexibility allows them to exploit a wide range of environments. They are considered pests in many regions due to their ability to damage crops, contaminate food supplies, and cause structural damage by gnawing on building materials. They are often targeted in pest control efforts. Thought to have originated in northern China and neighboring areas, brown rat has now spread to all continents except Antarctica, and is the dominant rat in Europe and much of North America. With rare exceptions, the brown rat lives wherever humans live. These rats are excellent swimmers and can swim for long distances, even underwater. They can hold their breath for up to three minutes, which allows them to enter and exit sewers and buildings through plumbing. They are known for their problem-solving abilities and can learn to navigate complex mazes and overcome obstacles. This intelligence also makes them adaptable to changes in their environment. Rats have strong, continuously growing incisors that they must gnaw on to keep from overgrowing. This constant gnawing behavior is why rats are known for chewing through various materials. They are social animals and often live in colonies or family groups. They exhibit complex social hierarchies, with dominant individuals having preferential access to resources.